Welcome back to the Immigration Answer Show. I'm Jim Hacking. I got my hat on because the sun is in my eyes. I hope you all are doing well. I am an immigration lawyer. We have offices in St. Louis, San Diego, and Washington, D.C. I will be here for the full hour answering as many of your immigration law-related questions as possible. I've been inside all day, so the sun is out. I had to come out and see what is going on. Hope you all are doing well. Hope you all had a great uh, had a great Monday and a good weekend. San Diego State is playing for the finals in the NCAA men's basketball. We had a lot of fun watching the LSU Iowa game, and we have no nothing to say about this other than to say when you talk trash, you get trash talk to you. All right, so we were excited to see the lovely ladies from LSU. Uh, pretty much demolish Iowa, and we're hoping that somehow, some way, the Aztecs of San Diego State figure out a way to beat UConn, who has never lost in four prior matches in the finals. Go ahead and let us know where you're watching. Uh, where you're watching from. Um, let us know maybe what your immigration issue is. I'm going to try to answer as many questions as I can. Remember, if you're in the waiting room. It helps if I see your face, so I know there's a live person on here. You don't have to be on camera when you're on the show, but just to know that somebody's here and paying attention, that usually helps. So let's say hi to Ole. Hi, Ole. Hey, Mr. Jim. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm going to complain. I'm a fan of yours. I've watched you for the last uh, one and a half years since I discovered you, and uh, I've enjoyed every show. You have helped me a lot. Um, Awesome. Thank you. If I get out of... uh, Camera because I'm at work. Yeah, for sure. I'll just, I'll just, I got you. You're off camera. Okay. okay. Um, uh, I have a question. I just uh, received uh, my green card uh, on 31st of March. Is a is a conditional green card. A two year green card um, has been one year journey. Is a uh, is based on marriage, for your record. Uh, I'm thinking of filing for uh, my children, and the eldest is. Uh, is turning 18 in May. So what is your advice? Do you think uh, uh, if I file as soon as possible, it's going to lock her age? If uh, if I file for her as a child of a green card holder? Because I know that uh, once she turns 21, might, uh, she might um, out of the or age out. Yeah. Yeah, but three years, ahead of, three years ahead of time should be okay, but I would file it as soon as you can. It's hard to predict. Right now, yes. because there's different moving pieces, it depends how long USCIS takes to process the case. It depends on how long uh, it takes for the visa number to become current. But you should be okay with a three-year lead time. Okay, thank you so much. So, uh, what documents do I require for the one thirty for each of the kids, apart from the birth certificate? Yeah, you need to prove up the relationship. So, birth certificates like the bare minimum. So. The birth certificate sort of starts the conversation, but you're going to, going to want to include proof that you have supported your uh, child um, for as long as they've been around. So, you know, financial records showing that you supported them, whatever you can do to demonstrate the relationship, pictures of the two of you together, trips you've taken over there, um, all that stuff is important. All right. Thank you. Appreciate your answer. Thank you so much. And I enjoy your show. Okay. Bye, Ole. Thanks for coming on. Golden Boy is here. What do you say, Golden Boy? You're on mute. Oh, oh sorry. You can hear me? I got you. How you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, hey, Jim. Uh, long story short, uh, my mom, she filed um, I-130 for my brother uh, when he was 19, and he's going to age out in two days after tomorrow. You mean he's going to turn 21 in two days or he's going to age yeah, out? Yeah, he, he's going to turn 21 in two days. Okay, so that doesn't mean he aged out. So, I mean, I know there is some, um, so uh, a, how, how do they call it? ACCP, whatever they call it, the, the, the law. Child child TSP, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's been right now, it's going to be right now two years. Um, so the case is still pending at USCIS. yeah. So, okay, so that's what, good. So that time's all frozen. Uh, yeah, but when I looked at the uh, the visa bulletin for this for April, 
uh, filing date is current or the uh, for the final action is backed up to one year right now based off his priority date. Yeah. But USCIS hasn't approved the I-130 yet. No, he hasn't approved yet, no. Yeah, so that, that freezes the time all the time. So as long as that's pending, he's not getting older. Okay. So just like the last caller, they should be okay unless it retrogresses a ton more, but I don't think it's going to. All right. So let's see if they approved it. Do I need, do I need to take an action for the, uh, for the uh, CSPA or, or they're going to take an action or how, how are they going to do it? Because, well, of course, if the, if the visa is current, then they should, they should approve it and start processing it at the national visa center. Um, but there won't be anything for you to do. They, they should, they should begin processing him as the under 21 year old child of an LPR. Your mom's an LPR, right? Yeah, yeah, it's an LPR, yeah. yeah. So as the underage child of an LPR, and then, uh, and then, um, the, if, if it were closer, like to me, your brother's not a close call. So if it were closer, you might have a fight with them. But I think even they can figure this one out, and he should be okay once he gets to the National Visa Center. Okay, all right. Yeah, it was just kind of weird. I mean, I didn't understand. They might turn it to, to uh, F2B. Like uh, that one takes like seven years, I guess, or something like that. Yeah. You know, maybe I'll do maybe I'll do like a basic training on CSPA for everybody. So because the first two calls today were about that, and we've been getting more calls about it. And now that makes sense with with the uh, retrogression for LPR, F2B cases, and F2A cases. That makes sense. So maybe I'll do a little training on it. Yeah, yeah, please. I mean, even the calculation, I did the calculation and it's turned out to be like, you, you deduct all that time, you know, and you, you deduct the one year that they have right now in the final action date. Yeah. So he turns to be like 18. Yeah, you're fine. Because basically, as long as it's a USAS, you're not getting older. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, if they put some crazy dates in there, he could be screwed. Like. Yeah, but I think that's unlikely. I think I think this last... Re- well, I think we'll know better next month, but I think this last reset was sort of the big one for now. I don't know if they'll do another one. We'll have to wait to see. Maybe in October. Yeah, but yeah, that's that's all about it. But thank you very much, brother. Appreciate your time. Okay, bye, Golden Boy. See ya. All right. You know, I noticed something that on the weekends nobody goes off camera, but during the week people like to go off camera. All right. Let's say hi to Larry. What's up, Larry? Hey, how you doing, Jim? Good, buddy. How you doing? Oh, not bad. Question for you. Uh, I married a girl overseas. We got married online. We have never met. Mm -hmm. I I plan on, we plan on meeting in the country of Georgia this September. How much proof am I going to need? Well, you're going to need a lot. Uh, Have you been married before? Yes, I have. Have you ever sponsored someone for a green card before? No, I have not. That's good. Um, well, I mean, when you go to Georgia, so, 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 um, a marriage that's online where the couple hasn't met, I, I don't like those cases very much because those are like you're hand delivering them something to hit you over the head with. Now, you know, the law says that if you can show that the marriage has been consummated, then all you got to show for that is that you've been in the same place after you got married. So they'll just assume that it was consummated. Um, you know, how long did you know each other before you got married? Six months. And how did you communicate by chat or call or oh, Facebook? By chat or WhatsApp. Yeah. So you're going to want to include all that stuff. Um, all the proof, all the chats that you can. Um, obviously your travel there's, overseas. There's plenty of it. Yeah. Your travel overseas is going to be important. Um, if they were to ask why, why did you get married so fast? Why did you get married online? Why didn't you go see her a few times before you got married? I guess we could say life in Georgia is sort of tough and it's not easy to get to. She actually, she works in Qatar. She is a Filipino national. Oh, so we are meeting in the country of Georgia, kind of like for me, neutral territory. And I think. for her. Okay. Okay. Now, right. um, Something I want to ask you about, is it better that she goes ahead and gets her name changed now? Uh, that doesn't really matter to me that much. It doesn't matter to immigration that much. If she does, I guess it's another little piece of evidence. 
But if right. it's a big, if it's a big hassle for, her, then I would say skip all that. Yeah, it's a little bit of a hassle in Qatar. I mean, it's a money thing there. Yeah, I would. I, there's no reason for that. It's all going to come down to whether is there a big age gap. Uh, she, I'm six, going to turn 65. She will be 44. So that's not, that's not nothing. Um, has she ever been married before? No, she's never been married. No children. So Filipino cases outside of the Philippines, those are tricky. We've had some of those cases and, uh, they're tricky. They're not easy cases to win. Um, I would just focus on documenting every single thing on your trip. When you go, make sure you document absolutely everything. Right. Because you're, you're going to need everything you got. And then even after you submit, you're going to want to keep gathering more evidence. We might want you to go visit her one more time before her visa interview, which is, you know, a year, a year and a half away. Right, right. Yeah, it says like nine to 13 months or something. After so, the so, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, that's, uh, okay. that's not an easy case, Larry. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to be. We kind of did it backwards, but it's done now. Yeah. What about, uh, does your family know about her and does, does her family know about you? My son does know about me and most of all my family does. Uh, her family, not so much. And I asked her the reason why. And for some reason, I guess Filipinos think all Americans are rich and she doesn't want to deal with that part of it with her family. So yeah. she's kept him out of the picture. Yeah, I think uh, I think some people will uh, have some thoughts about that in the chat, uh, but I think I think that's right. I mean, the one good thing is that you're not going to have to get you're not going to have to have her process through Manila, which is I think the worst embassy for spouse cases right now, right. even worse than Morocco. But um, you're going to have to get a police certificate of every country she's lived in since she turned. Uh, since she turned 16. So that'll be later, not now. You'll need that for the next phase of things. But this right, is right. this is gonna be a tough this is gonna be a tough fight. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I kind of figured it was gonna be. <laughs> but All I'm right, in it. All right, buddy. Good luck. All right, thank you, Jim. See you, man. All right. Love is in the air. Love is in the air. Uh let's go ahead. Here's the link one more time if anybody need it. And let's say hi to Brox. Hi, Brox. Hey Jim, how you doing? I'm doing well. How you doing? Pretty good. Thanks for taking my call. Hey, um, so a friend of mine, he, when he was three years old, um, he was born in Congo. So three years old, he was living in a refugee camp in Namibia. And for seven, eight years living in Namibia, he, uh, his family granted asylum. And 2015, he came to America. Uh, about six months ago, he had argument with his girlfriend and, um, you know, he got, um, he went to jail for it for five months after he got out, after, you know, assault, um, aggravated felony. After he got out, ISIS, ICE, you know, took him and he's in Caroline Detention Center. What can we do right now to, you know, to stop to that, you know, uh, what do you call that he's going to send him back? Did he ever get his green card? Yes, he has a green card. Ah, darn it. It's actually easier to deport someone that has their green card than someone who only has asylum. Um, and was it was it a charge involving bodily injury? Um, I'm not sure about that, but it's a felony, aggravated assault felony. Yeah, yeah. I'm not 100% sure of the whole thing. We're just that's looking for... That's going to be tricky. Now... Everyone's going crazy in the comments because I've been looking for a, a client from Namibia for a really long time. Now, I know he's not from Namibia, but no. we've, we've had someone talk about Namibia the last two days, which is really crazy because I've literally been doing this show. This is episode number 340, 340 yeah. something. And we three hundred two. No, it's not that 302 is wrong. I must see. I'm I'm fasting. <laughs> Ramadan, so I'm sort of yeah. lightheaded. I, I screwed that up. I think it's 342. Um. Well, has he received a notice to appear? Yes, he has two master hearing already, um, and he has a master hearing tomorrow. They're not letting him out on bond. No, the bond hearing was uh, denied. Bond was did denied. They say, did they say he's an aggravated felon? Yes. Yeah, that's tough. He's gonna have a hard time staying. I'm not saying for sure, but he needs a deportation lawyer. Where is he? In North Carolina? Uh, uh, no, he's not uh, Virginia, North Carolina Detention Center. 
uh, North, not North Carolina, Carolina Detention Center in um, somewhere in, Virginia. in, yeah. In Virginia. Yeah, so he needs a deportation lawyer in Virginia. We don't do deportation anymore. Uh, okay. So since, you know, my question is he's, uh, since he was three years old, he never had a birth certificate from Congo, never had a passport from Congo. He came here with a refugee, um, you know, stamp or whatever it is. Um, yeah. How can they deport him when he doesn't have a birth certificate from Congo? Um, well, that's hard. But what they do is they make you sit in jail until you get a passport so they can deport you. Uh, by I don't know if in but the Congo will give him a passport because they don't okay. have him as a. The United States makes contract makes agreements with different countries and sort of says if you want to get State Department aid, you've got to help us deport people. So I don't know on a on a country by country basis whether they would deport him but they might the other thing is they might say uh they might say you are deportable and subject to deportation but we're not going to deport you because it wouldn't be safe for you to go back to congo so that's a possibility too he, they could give him withholding but but that that sort of sucks that's like being ordered deported but not really getting sent is there options of conventional torture um because his father was killed by the uh, the people who's in power right now. So yeah. sending him back is very dangerous for him. Yeah. So if he can't get, if he can't get asylum, which he probably can't, he could get withholding or protection under under cat, which you just referenced. That's what I was saying. It's sort of like asylum light, but mm -hmm. um, again, that's going to take a lawyer to pull off. Yeah, are we looking into. An, you, you don't do that anymore. No. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah, Thanks. Um, so here, here's yeah. a here's a name for you, Ava Banach. B-E-N-A-C-H. She's in Washington, D.C. She might be able to help. Okay. B-A-N-A-C-H. Okay. All right. B-A-N-A-C-H. Yep. Thanks, Brock. Yeah, Thanks so much. I appreciate okay. it. Yep. yep. All right. Sam is here. What do you say, Sam? You're on mute, Sam. Hi. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm all right. Um, I have just one question. So if I'm going to... I'm going to get my citizenship soon. I already yeah. filed my I-130. So I want it as a permanent resident. So I want to know if, um, can I do a change or just leave it? So you are in the United States and you have your green card. Mm -hmm. and how did you get your green card, Sam? Uh, my father filed for me. And now you're married to someone overseas and you want to spot and you've, you have filed an I-130 as yeah. a LPR. Yes. You're about to you're about to get your citizenship. Yeah, you'll just notify USCIS on your pending. Is the I-130 pending with USCIS or is it at the National Visa Center? Um, it's pending. It's saying case is actively re being reviewed about yes. it now. Yeah. So once you get your certificate of citizenship, just make a copy of it and send it to them with a cover letter with your receipt notice for the I-130, and say, hey, I just want to make sure that you guys know. And then in all caps, I became a U.S. citizen. All yes. caps, <laughs> so that they get the letter. Okay. Like, like I would really, I, I'm serious. Like I would say it in big, bold letters. Big, I, I became a U.S. citizen, like 20 point font so that they see it. And then, right. and then hopefully they'll upgrade it. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's all. Thank you so much. That was easy. Good luck, Sam. <laughs> Thank you. See ya. All right. Antonio's, oh, Antonio's here. Hi, Antonio. Hey, Jim. How you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm great, sir. So I've got two questions. Um, first question is, I have a priority date of February 5th, 2023, uh, I-130. I and when I filed that, I had seen my wife four times. We got married in, in uh, November, but I had seen her four times from the time we met to the time I filed the I-130. She's overseas? She's overseas. She's in Jamaica. Okay, cool. And since we've gotten married, <clears throat> I've seen her another three times. That's a lot, dude. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> I miss her. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I mean, just so everybody's paying attention, see the difference between Larry's case earlier and Antonio's case here. Larry got married online without ever meeting face to face. Antonio has seen has seen her now seven times altogether. So just as an objective person, I, I trust Larry and everything he's saying. But you can see how Antonio's case is hopefully going to be easier than Larry's case. Go ahead, Antonio. So my 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 question is. Um, so I've got the I-130 pending, and I actually also filed the K-3. They received that March 13th. Yeah. Should I continue uploading, um, like, the trip evidence or just leave it alone? Yeah, that's, it's fine. It doesn't matter. Now, the K-3, USCIS will approve that K-3, but the State Department won't 
process it. So they they just ignore K3s. So it's this weird hitch in the law where USCIS still accepts them, but once they get to the National Visa Center and the National Visa Center realizes that you have an approved I-130, then they just go ahead and stop processing the K-3. Got it. So I would focus on, if you're going to upload it, I, I don't think you need to upload it to both, but I would I, would, I don't think it's a bad idea to upload it to the um, to the yeah. I-130 case. Yeah. Okay. Um, I had another question. I just, I just lost it, but. Oh, uh, sorry. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff. Right. Bye, buddy. See ya. All right. That was Antonio. Let's say hi to Mario. What do you say, Mario? Uh, hi, Jim. How are you doing? You okay? I'm doing well. Yeah, I'm doing good. Thanks. How are you doing? Excellent. Good. Thank you. Thank you for all the hard work you're doing for the charity free community work. Um, okay. So I basically messed up with my ESTA. Uh, I'm British national, uh, got married with the US citizen. Uh, initially, we have planned that she's going to move in uh, to London, where I'm living. So we got married in uh, U.S., and then she's going to move in here. Uh, now the plan changed, and she's not moving in, and I have to move there. But the, what I messed up in the ESTA, that uh, in June 22, she got uh, permission for the marriage, the marriage license. And then in September, I visited uh, and then I was on Esther on the next day. We got married. Yikes. Uh, after, after two weeks, I come back. Uh, and then uh, <clears throat> she visited me in December in London for two weeks uh, on holidays. And then she went back. Then uh, I go back again in January to meet her again, lives two weeks there, come back. And then again, recently, uh, in March, I went there for three weeks and comes back. Uh, but now we are in situation that I have to move there. Uh, now, what are our options? Because if if we, I move there, I have to do adjustment of status where we already messed up the ESTA. Some of them saying that you breach the ESTA law, so you will be in trouble uh, when I got married back in September. And if I go now, and do adjustment of status, it's gonna take probably eight to 12 months to get EAD at least and all, and all those things. Uh, so I don't know what is option for me right now and what is remedy, what I messed up before all this. So what would I do? <laughs> okay, so I think, now this might not be what you wanna hear, but I think this is the right answer. I think you should have now that you're legally married i think your wife should file an i-130 petition for you to consular process okay I think, I think it would be dangerous to come back and hang out you you would have to you would have to wait 60 days then apply for the green card and the travel document and the work card and then you're talking six or seven months to get it so you'd be stuck here in the United States without the ability to work for about eight or nine months. And it sounds like that might be tough. But the bigger problem is that I think that the embassy is much more likely to forgive you getting married a day after you arrived than USCIS would be. Generally, I think it's the other way around. Generally, I think USCIS is more forgiving. And I like to be in the United States and have the ability to appeal USAS decision, which I don't, I don't have with the State Department. Generally, I like to have my fights inside the United States, not outside the United States. But in this particular situation, because you've entered on ESTA so many times, and because most importantly, because you got married 48 hours after landing, that seems to me like they could ding you for playing a trick on them by getting married. Now, it's my understanding that the crime, the bad thing is getting married and applying all on that same trip. I think we can separate you out from that by having you consular process and wait in line like everybody else. It's just going to take a year and a half for you to be able to come to the United States and get a green card. And it might be hard for you to enter again on ESTA. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, and, so and if we apply that, the other thing, sorry, quick, the other thing you have in your back pocket 
is if you have any way of proving what you told me at the top of the call, which is that the plan was originally for her to come live in England. And then if you could document how that plan changed, then I think that makes you more, uh, more uh, sympathetic. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So if she apply I-130, then I have to wait here uh, whatever time. And uh, you're saying that I can't go back on ESTA again for vacation or anything. They might stop me. I wouldn't say you can't, but they might stop you. That's right. They might stop. Okay. Okay. But if I if I get there on Esther and then we do adjustment of status there, uh, then obviously it's going to be again long time. But anyway, they can give me the work permission because I'm British national, so I'm not worried about green card or traveling things or things. I only need to live with her and get work permission to work in there, and, and that's all. And then I can travel with my British passport, I think. Uh, no, is there no, any way? No, no that's, that's wrong. Once, oh, okay. you, once you file for the green card, if you leave before you get the travel document or before you get the green card, then your green card case goes in the trash and you got to start all over. I see. Okay. Okay. So the best option is so we wait here for I-130. I think so. Okay. Okay. Brilliant. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your advice. Thank Bye, you. Bye, Mario. See you, bud. All right. Didi's here. Hi, Didi. <clears throat> Hi, Jim. Good evening. Sorry for sorry for that. No worries. Uh, uh, about a week ago, I received RFE, and I don't know why they sent me RFE. I haven't. I look. Uh, on the website and I saw they've sent me an RFE but I haven't received it yet so I don't know I'm much confused because I have filed this for over um, almost two years now why are they sending me RFE now what are you applying for a marriage um, based green card and are you the beneficiary or are you the US citizen no I am the beneficiary did you submit your medical at the beginning? No. So that might just be what they're asking for. They might just be asking for the medical. Before they will schedule for an interview? Well, I don't know. You might not have heard, but they're starting to waive interviews. So sometimes lately people have been getting RFEs and then they go ahead and say, we don't even need them. We don't even need to do an interview. We just need your medical. Send it to us. Oh. Oh, okay. So we still start preparing for the documents if they ask in the RFE. Well, that was my other question. So on a scale of one to 10, how much <laughs> marriage evidence do you think you sent them? On a, if one is a little and 10 is a ton, where would you say you sent? Uh-uh, honestly, when we were filing, uh, we didn't send I, in the document. We only filed the paperwork. I didn't, I don't even think we filed, we sent any picture or something, not, no. Only the documents that we sent. We didn't send any um Marriage evidence. Yeah. Yeah, so that's probably what the RFE is. Mm. So yeah, you should start working on that. Oh, okay. 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 And do you think when they receive the RFE, probably we might not go for an interview? Maybe. But if yeah. you didn't submit any evidence at the beginning, that means they're gonna be suspicious. That's not a good move. Mm. But if they request now that for, for uh the RFE that they said we I have not received it yet. So if they request for you know an evidence and we are it, because now we have tons of it and we submitted it now, would that be possible? Yeah, but I think that the fact that you didn't send it in the first place makes it more likely you're going to get an interview. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because at the beginning I didn't have um social security. And so we didn't have much evidence to send because. Yeah, but there's still there's still good stuff that you can show at the beginning, like when you when you, you know, like your relationship evidence, how you know each other, how you met mm. the kind of things you like to do together, that kind of stuff. Uh, we did with the lawyer. So we don't know if he did something, but he didn't ask for anything from us. OK, so. well, you'll just have to wait and see what comes in that RFE, Dee. Dee. OK, thank you so much. All right. Bye bye. Bye. All right, Fatima's here. Hi, Fatima. Hi. Hi, Jim. How you doing? I'm doing good. I hear you're fasting. Are you fasting? <laughs> yes. Today is the, what's today? The 11th day or 12th day of Ramadan, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm fasting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, got about, I got about an hour to go. 
Yeah, Ramadan Mubarak. And it's sunny out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had to sit outside because it's been so cold. So it's nice to be outside. Yeah. Okay. So um, I have been with you like three weeks ago, something like that. Um, okay because I have an issue with my husband and I'm green card holder. And you advised me to find a lawyer here and file for divorce. Yeah. So uh, if I get my divorce in my back, my home country, that um, that will be worse. And I can bring that paperwork for divorce over there here and just will be OK. Or I need to file a divorce over here. It's like an important step. That's my question. Well, so first of all, I need you, Fatima. I mean, again, I'm sorry you're going through this, but remind me where you are in the immigration process. Do you have a green card? You're waiting for a green card. What's the what's the um, deal? I'm a green card holder. Okay. And you want to keep your green card? Yeah, I already have a 10 years green card. Okay. And so are you going to stick around and wait to apply for citizenship or are you going to or you want to leave? Uh um no, no, I will stay and apply for citizenship, but you recommend for me to not rely anymore on my husband's status. Right. Yeah, so we'll, yeah. Apply on the, we'll apply on the five-year rule. So how long have you had your green card? Um, my first inter here is in December 2020. So almost two years and something. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. so, what, what's, so, okay, I got all the immigration stuff. Now t t walk me through what you're asking about the divorce. I might not be able to answer this, but go ahead. So, yeah, because you say it like uh, to be not rely on my husband case and yeah. wait for until be five years or yeah. for something. Uh, I agreed with that. I will be able to do that. But you ask me to file a divorce. My question, why I should file a divorce? It's the paper. Um, if I bring a paper divorce from Sudan or from my back country home, that's will worse or I need a divorce like American divorce over here. Well, of course, I'm not advocating anybody do anything about their divorce. I'd never tell people exactly what to do with their wedding, their marriage status. But I understand the question. OK, so so you're asking me. Well, are you are you saying that you might just stay married to him on the books up until the five year mark? Is that um, what you mean? Trying, I'm trying to get my divorce back on my home. Did you get married in back home in Sudan, or did you yep. married in America? Yep. Back, I'm married in Sudan. I and he filed I I thirty for me, and I came with IR visa, IR one visa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, is he still in America? Yeah, he is a U.S. citizen. Oh right, and so my question though is, is a can can two people living in America get legally divorced in Sudan? I don't know the answer to that question. Because um, uh, if I get my divorce here, I still need that divorce because our religions. Mm -hmm. So I can't, They our religions uh, doesn't believe, sorry for saying that, doesn't believe an American divorce. Uh, if I get a divorce over here, I will still legally in my religions, uh, husband and wife. So, yeah, but, but for immigration, for you know, and I get that. I get that. I mean, from an immigration standpoint, the question is, you know, I, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but but you might want to sponsor someone later for a green card. And if you're still legally married, if you get divorced in Sudan, I don't know if America will recognize it. Oh, that's my question. That's my point. If I bring a, a paper divorce, a divorce paper from Sudan from my home country or from Sudan, and I bring it to the officer in the interview, he will recognize that or he will believe on that. Is this like a, a divorce or I should need like American divorce? That's uh, that's confusing me. OK, so I would say you might you you might be able to get away with just a Sudanese divorce. Mm -hmm. but you also might be making things more complicated and the officer's not going to like it as much. It's cleaner and easier for the officer. I'm not saying what to do. I'm just saying from an immigration standpoint, yeah, everything, everything is going to be, everything's going to be cleaner. If you have, in my mind, both divorces, if you get divorced there and here, that's maybe overkill. But yeah. if you get, if you, I, I know in my heart of hearts that if you get divorced in America, you're not going to have any problems with them recognizing the divorce. If you get divorced in Sudan, then I think I can see them saying, hmm, is she still legally married? I need to go do some research on this. Maybe I need to go see my supervisor. Now, maybe, you know, you could file a brief and say, 
the United States recognizes divorce decrees from Sudan and give them some case law and stuff. But my, my thought is if you're having that fight with the USCIS officer who's deciding whether or not you get your citizenship, then I think that's already delaying your case. That's all I'm saying. Oh, oh. Yeah. I, yeah. See, Pineapple Lemon says it perfectly right here. Officers mm-hmm. are lazy and don't like extra work. The easier you make for them, the better. Boy, that's that's perfect. Oh, um, oh, yeah, I catch that. Because the first time they 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 all recognize our my marriage because we were married in Sudan, and we we I, we applied through that with a yeah. certificate of marriage from Sudan. So I believe that they will accept that divorce from Sudan. No need to do divorce over here. That's my believing, and that's my thought. Yeah, but it doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what Jim thinks. It only matters what the officer thinks. Yeah, I catch that. So that's an important step to do. Yep. And, 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 and I'm not saying you got to do it right away. Like if you want to go ahead and do the Sudanese divorce first and then save a little money and do the American divorce. I mean, is your husband going to contest either divorce? Um, he will not believe about the American one, but he will. He will. The, the most things will end the relationship. That's our Sudanese or that's our religion divorce. So this is the end of the end of step. For yeah, all. So if you if you if you're I mean, it sounds like you have to and want to do the Sudanese divorce. In my mind, once you do that, uh-huh. then, then then it should be a pretty short conversation about, hey, I need to go ahead and get this done for America. too. Yeah. Do, you, do you object? So or do you- easy. The American one is easy. The hardest one, that's our religions or the Sudanese one. Yeah. So I just focus on the religious one and then and then do that one later. Oh, yeah. You, you have three years. Yep. Yes. Yeah. OK. Thank you. Thank you for All right. All right. Ramadan Kareem. Uh, Ramadan Kareem. See ya. All right. Tematopes here. Are you there? You're on mute. Tematope. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? I got you. How you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for your help. I have a TV question quick to ask. Can you turn off, turn off your other phone because it's getting feedback? I think you got two phones on. Okay. I did. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I have three questions to ask on behalf of my friend. Um, first of question is that how many years, uh, how many months after somebody gets married can he start to be doing the process when he married to the U.S. citizen? I, I, I didn't understand the whole question. After somebody gets married, how long till they can file for a green card? Is that it? Yeah, like he start the processing. Like how many months you need to wait? The next, the next day. The next day. Yep. Wow. Okay. Second question is that um, this, my friend, his wife filed for bankrupt two years ago before they met and married. Can he affect his status? Yeah, they're going to need a co. Most likely, they're going to need a co-sponsor because they need to show that they've paid their taxes, that they make enough money to support the non-U.S. citizens. So they probably need a co-sponsor unless they're unless they're making good money the last three years. Yeah, he, she is the one, the one that uh, the wife is the one that fight for it. But the husband just out of the asylum status, he just out of it. He is working before, but he's now out of the asylum status. So they just need the full signer, right? Our sponsor. So we have a U.S. citizen and somebody who's seeking asylum. The person who's seeking asylum just married the U.S. citizen, right? Yes. And the U.S. citizen applied for bankruptcy recently. Yeah, two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So the U.S. citizen, if they didn't make, say, 30 or 40,000 on their taxes each of the last three years, then they're going to need a joint sponsor. Joint sponsor. OK. Um, the third question is. Uh, if I wanted to if I wanted to direct him to you guys, how can he go with you guys? Sure. I'll just put right here. I'll put our um, our contact information on here. Just have him send an email and say, I'm Tematope's friend. Uh, how do you say your name? Timot- Timotope? Timotope, you can call me Jason. Yeah, well, I my I had a client, Timotope, a long time ago. So that there's our email address, info at hackingimmigrationlaw.com. Just, just say, um, I'm Timotope, and I was on the show with Jim, and this is my friend, and maybe just email me and the friend, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks, Timotope. Have a good day at work. Bye, buddy. All right, all right. We're just flying through. Munir is here. Hi, Munir. 
Assalamu alaikum, Jim. How's it going? Good, good. How you doing? Good, good. Alhamdulillah. I have a very simple question. Um, my wife and I filed for a concurrent filing on March, um, February of 15th of this year, 2023. Uh, it's a marriage uh, based green card, uh, marriage to a US citizen. On March of uh, March of 15th, exactly a month after we completed, uh, I completed my biometrics. Nice. Uh, and two days later, uh, I received uh, an email from uh, the field office saying uh, we need to send it, uh, send in our I-693. Now, usually you get a courtesy letter, which says uh, we uh, haven't gotten any, uh, that thing and do yeah. not send anything at this time. But this one was specifically requesting 693. Now, I spoke to my lawyer and she says this is unusual being because it's only been 45 days. Usually this happens when it's very close to either the interview being waived or the case is being ready to uh, adjudicating. So uh, I just want to know what's, uh, what are your thoughts on that? I think it's all a good sign. I think you should do what they say. I think USCIS is all over the place on 693s, right? Like So, so imagine, imagine this really slow-moving agency where everybody just sort of does the bare minimum and just goes along to get along. Does this don't really, you know, I don't know if you saw this great movie. There's this great movie called Zootopia. It's a kid's movie. It's about this bunny rabbit who's a cop and the bunny rabbit goes to the driver's, the driver's license office and the person working there is this uh, sloth, the sloth, right? You know, and they go like this. They go, oh, right. So imagine that's USCIS, right? And so now somebody from above has dropped this bomb on them that says, hey, you guys, you really going slow on these cases. Here's one thing you need to do things faster. You need to get that medical in as fast as you can. And so some offices send out a courtesy letter. Some offices send out a, a request for evidence. Some offices send out both. So I just take it all as a good sign. Your case is moving pretty fast and you're just chilling. Okay, inshallah, and I hope the officer turns out uh, turns out to be the Flash from the <laughs> Toby Head Twins. Yeah. We love that movie. My wife and I love that movie. That's absolutely. One. Yep, I think about it. I think about that sloth all the time. All right, thank you so much, Jim. Bye, Munir. See you, buddy. Bye, bye. Yeah, everybody knows about that sloth. That sloth is something else. That that is exactly who we're thinking about. Yago's back. What's up, Yago? Hey, Jim, how you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? Doing well, doing well. I'm getting married this week. I'm excited. Congratulations. That's <laughs> exciting. Yeah. The wife, the, the fiance is after the ring and everything is going well. Nice. So, so my question today yeah. is regarding the, sorry? That's fantastic. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. She's actually doing her her pedicure today for the for a special event. The hair, I'm all excited. Nice. <laughs> So my question is regarding the H-1B, uh, more focused on cap gap. Um, so today I was known for the attorney that my case is still on, on the USCIS website. Uh, I didn't get denied. So it just says submitted. I did some reading. I know that. And just like, I just wanted, wanted to know what is kind of what submitted means and uh, what are the requirements to be so for me to be able to be eligible for the cap gap? And I have another one question, but like all regarding to the, the cap gap. So is your spouse a U.S. citizen? Yes, yes. Why are you getting too, Why are you worrying about all this? You don't need to worry about all this. You're going to file for a work card based on that. Oh, I see. Okay. So the cap gap covers you up until the time that they tell you your your case is over. Uh huh. So as long as your case is still pending. And I would say, between you and me, stop poking around. Just leave it alone until somebody tells you the case is over. You're covered by the cap gap. Mm, I see. I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, well, I reached out to I reached out to the office already. Okay, great. We're excited. When so when are you getting married on Thursday? Uh, Wednesday. Oh wow. Oh, that's exciting. We'll take lots of pictures. And as I say to many people. Don't just show up in t-shirts and jeans, which I've actually had happen. So I know I know you'll make it nice. Yeah, we're here in our county. The the courthouse doesn't do the marriage, like the wedding. Uh, so we have someone 
Like uh, I forgot the word exactly, but someone authorized to do it. Yeah, it's gonna be special. All right, All right buddy, keep us okay. Uh, just like just before we close it, uh, I reached out to the office already, and they said to me that like your office they said to me to wait a little bit to get, but they said like for more, what's it called, like evidence. Just like wait a little bit to apply. We'll talk about that. I'll 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 find the lead in the lead software and I'll follow up with you. Yeah, it's it's with uh, Mr. Ron uh, Juan Brett Bennett Bennett. I forgot his Bennett. name. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks, Yago. Okay. Let me know. Bye, buddy. See Bye. Ya. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. Let's see who's next. Who is next? Uh, S. Goodman. Oh, Saul's in the house. What's up, Saul? You're on mute. Oh, thank you very much. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm very well. Uh, thanks for meeting with me the last time we spoke. I think it was about a couple of months ago. Okay. Um, this was regarding a case that, you know, demanded that I withdraw uh, both I-751 and N-400 um, okay. because uh, this person had filed um, and signed in the place of their spouse um, you know, you advised at the time to just redraw both cases, and that was done. And uh, USCI has acknowledged the receipt of both uh, cases, and they were withdrawn. And okay. now, you know, is in a place right now where he needs to refile the case. But yeah. the U.S. citizen spouse is still insisting that they don't want the divorce, but they want an annulment. And they want the annulment on the grounds of duress. But this person does not agree to that ground, and they would rather seek a uh, divorce. But it's been very, very difficult trying to get the U.S. citizen spouse to agree. Okay, so what the the person, the foreign national, what can we make up a fake name for the foreign national? Can you give a name, a fake name for me? Okay, let's just say the Joe. Joe, okay. Yeah. So Joe, where's Joe from? Joe's from Nigeria. And Joe came to the United States when? Uh, 2018, September 2018. And what kind of a visa did Joe have when Joe came in September of 2018? Uh, B1, B2. And uh, did was Joe married in Nigeria before Joe came to the United States? No, was not married. Joe had never been married before? Both of them were never married. was their first marriages. So when Joe went to the embassy... To get the visa, they gave you're telling me they gave Joe a visa to a single man from Nigeria. Uh, Joe actually got the visa from another country where he had studied. Ah. Yes. Okay. okay, but Joe had never been married before, and Joe said that he was single when Joe applied for the B1, B2. That's correct. What was the purpose of Joe's visit to the United States? Uh, he got the I think it was a visiting visa for a conference in the U.S. And did Joe go to that conference? Yes. Okay. And cool. there is documentation to support that. Okay. All right. So then Joe enters in September of 2018. And when does Joe meet the spouse? Can we come up with a fake name for the spouse? Can we call her Mary? Yes. And they met online before Joe ever came uh, to the U.S. Uh, they met the first time Joe came for the conference. Uh, Joe came again another time for a research program while he was still in this other country. And, yeah. you know, they also met at this time. Even at that time, the U.S. citizen was suggesting that they get married. Yeah. Uh, but eventually, Joe returned to finish the program and, you know, went to Nigeria and then finally came to the U.S. So when and did they get they got married uh, March 2019. Okay. So March let's say about six months later. So then Mary files an I-130 and a 485, and Joe gets a two-year green card. Yes, it got approved. They filed in April. It got approved in July. Um, Mary wow. returned to nursing school, uh, completed a program, and was being supported by Joe uh, throughout the process. Uh, finally, COVID started. Uh, Mary started to work uh, at the state where she finished the nursing program. So pretty much they lived apart for a few few years, but they would visit each other uh, from time to time. But eventually the marriage uh, fell apart. So in the, and, two, 
the two years that they were legally married, how many mm -hmm. months did they spend living together? I would say uh, altogether about six months. Six out of the two years. Yes. And then, you know, they're still currently married. And, you know, after a while, uh, Mary returned to the state that Joe lived at. Uh -huh. And they continue to live together. But at the same time, there was a lot of uh, malicious uh, events going on, given to the fact that Joe had signed um, the, the I-751 because he filed the I-751 and signed in the place of Mary. And did at Mary, the time... Did Mary know Joe was filing the 751? Yes. Okay. So the assumption at the time was that Mary was on board with it. What do you mean? But the then eventually, what do you mean the, did 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 Mary know that Joe was filing the seven fifty one? Yes. Did Mary know that Joe had signed her name to the seven fifty one? Uh, Joe informed Mary after the fact, and eventually, that's totally fucked up, man. Yeah, and then you know, uh, Mary continued to suggest or demand that you know Joe withdrew uh, withdraw both cases, and you know towards the end of last year. Joe finally decided to withdraw all both cases okay. and USCIS acknowledged receipt and both now, cases were withdrawn. Okay. And now Joe wants to file a standalone 751 without her signing it just by himself. That's correct. Are they divorced? They're not divorced. So uh, um, Mary is still requesting an annulment on the grounds of duress and claiming that uh, Joe knew from the, from the get go that he wanted was you know to get the green card i think joe's in big trouble what's your question for me um so the question here is um uh, joe's trying to understand you know what the options are in terms of getting um an annulment approved on the grounds of duress is if that's something that's going to be possible and if one can still go ahead to refile with uh, an annulment uh, decision. Yeah, the, the annulment is going to really screw him up. Um, it's going to put the green card at risk. I mean, the, if she's throwing around, if, if, if he's admitted to her that he signed the 751 without her permission, then that's called fraud. So if she's throwing that around and using that as leverage to get the annulment, a judge is most likely going to give her that annulment. And and then they're going to go after his green, his original green card. So if you're asking me, Jim, what do you think the chances are of him getting divorced or annulled and getting a 751 approved under the facts as you've laid them out? I think the chances of success are less than 5%. Right. So what if Joe decides to push for a divorce instead of an annulment? Um, do you think there's any chance to in that case? I think then you know also I, Joe I being the Joe being the petitioner in this case would that yeah. jeopardize the case in any way? Well, how much marital evidence does Joe have? Um, Joe also has uh, evidence to show that you know even when they lived together and when they lived separately, he continued to support financially. Um, you know, even support until the point where you know when. Mary returned to leave in the same state with Joe. Yeah, but but that that cuts both ways. Financially supporting also sometimes is interpreted as a bribe. Mm -hmm. So, but I asked you about the marital evidence. What marital evidence do they have? It sounds like in two years they only lived together six months. Did, I'm assuming they didn't have a lease together. I'm assuming I'm assuming they didn't have a lot of pictures together. It sounds like putting everything else to the side. It sounds like a pretty thin marriage case overall i i understand what you're saying in terms of um you know having leads together i think they had one at the beginning yeah um also like you said not very many pictures but there are evidence to show that you know uh funds were combing good i think this case is on life support i think the chances of him staying whether it's an annulment is almost like a a, a zero percent chance a divorce mm -hmm is maybe a 5% chance, but I, I wouldn't take this case. Gotcha. All right, that's the question. Thank you very much. Bye, Saul. See you, buddy. Yeah. All right, that was our old friend, Saul Goodman. Saul Goodman. 
Although that sounds tough. Gabrielle's here. Hi, Gabrielle. Oh, she's back. Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you. How are you doing? I am alive, thankfully. Um, so I have reached out to the lawyer. Yeah. Um, I gave her the seven business days. I sent it to her yesterday. Um, however, I looked her up on the internet. I don't think she still practices with that um, with that law firm, but she's still a co-founder of the law firm. So, Gabrielle, why don't you send me an email? I'll help you track. I'll help you at least get your file back. Okay. And then um, I got to I got to tell you something that happened today. I've never I've never had this happen in my entire life. Can I read you a little email that I got? Are you ready for this? It's about your case. Ready or not? Okay. All right, here we go. Hold on, let me find it. You got an email about my case? Well, you'll see when I when I say it in a moment. Uh oh. All right. Um, somebody said peace to me, and then they said they had, they said their name. I'm not going to say their name, but they said what you do for immigrants is beyond amazing. And for that, please accept my heartfelt appreciation on behalf of all immigrants. After watching your episode 340. Regarding the caller, Gabrielle Ecator, whom you said really needs a lawyer as her case seems to be a not so easy one, I would like to help her with some of her legal fees to come in to see you to handle her case. This country is a country of immigrants and Gabrielle seems to be super smart and I feel that she would make a difference once she's done with her medical school. Please let me know how to get in touch with Ab Gabrielle to let her know and please let me know what your fees are and if it can be paid in increments. Oh! Now, I don't think he's saying he's paying the whole thing. Okay, maybe, I hope it's not. But, but that was really sweet. Don't you think that was sweet? I think that was extremely thoughtful. Yeah, I've never, like, literally, I've never gotten an email like that before. I mean, I mean, once I did, I've had people, I've had people pay for immigration. I, I once had a guy was so happy that I did a lawsuit for him that he paid for three other people's future lawsuits. Like he said, Jim, if you find someone who doesn't have any money and wants to do a lawsuit, yeah, yeah. So that was, that's pretty impressive. So, um, why don't you email me the letter that you sent to the lawyer? Okay. Say I'm Gabrielle. I was on the show, and then we'll we'll go from there. We'll see if we can work something out. Maybe I could discount my fee a little, and this guy could pay a little. We can, and maybe you can pay a little, and we'll figure something out. Yes. I, oh, speechless. Okay. Your email is Jim. Nope. My email is info. Oh. At, my email is info at hackingimmigrationlaw.com. Not Jim at. Don't don't be sending stuff to Jim at. Oh, okay. My, my official at, email is at, info at yep hackingimmigrationlaw.com. Immigration law.com. Okay. Um speechless and thank thank you so much. Thank sure. you. I appreciate whoever it is. If you're on this call, I want you to know that I'm very thankful. If it's real, I'm extremely thankful. And I, I really look forward to, you know passing the baton on in the future and helping someone else because this is something that everyone struggles with and what you do jim like my mom has been battling me for a month to come on your show and i'm like mom i am busy like from work yeah. i'm like literally from school is to work and then studying like there's no time like i'm literally in the middle of like school work right now but right. i said let me join you awesome. know and see what can do so i'm so I'm appalled. Thank you so much. Okay. We'll I'll talk go to in you. and send you an email. Okay. All right. Bye, Gabrielle. See ya. Bye. Thank you. Yep. Oh, that was great. That was great. Uh, all right. And on that happy note, we're going to call it a day. Um, I saw that nurse Laura wants to talk to me. Nurse Laura, just get here early. You know, you know where to find me. I'll be here. I'll be ready to talk tomorrow. Tomorrow's show will be at 4 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Central, and that'll be episode 343, 343. I don't know how I screwed up that 302. Uh, thanks, everybody, for being here. I'll be at the office tomorrow, uh, and I'll be doing the show then. I guess it's episode 343. If you want to get in the waiting room ahead of time, you really should get on that uh, text line, 314-470-3300. Text the word show, and you'll get a text with the link and all that good stuff. So, Thanks, everybody, and have a good night. Oh, go Aztecs. Hey, and leave us a review if you got a minute. We got a bad one-star review from someone mad we didn't call him back fast enough. So if you go to reviewhackinglaw.com, leave us a review. We'd appreciate it. Thanks, everybody.